My name is Mimi Lauder and I'm an artist. I make paintings and drawings and all my work is on paper. So I'm particularly excited to talk about one of my favorite artists, James Enzer. Um, one of the things I want to talk about today is Enzer's use of religious iconography as well as literary iconography and the way he did this in order to really depict a kind of allegorical representation. So in this piece, um, Death Chasing the Flock of Mortals, he has the figure of the spirit of death and the inevitability of dying. And so we have the masses of people trying to run somewhere, trying to get away. And you can see, and this is where his, his skill is just so exciting and delicious to look at, and especially as an artist and someone that draws a lot, it's, it's inspiring for me. Um, the amount of detail in his etchings is profound. And so in the front, you see the details of the faces, the details of the expressions and the teeth. And as you go into the distance, you get this feeling that it's infinite, the amount of people. Um, and so if you're in a crowd here, there's no escape. And it's kind of this tough love expression of reality that says, you know, we're all going to die. So you might as well live your life now, um, which is very much a, an atheist perspective. This piece, uh, it's called The Scoundrels. And it's kind of ironic because of this iconographic representation, the structure that I was talking about. So what we see is a figure in the middle, and behind him and around him is this aura that is radiating from him, much like the way Christ would be depicted. On the sides um, are these very intricately detailed representations of two figures, accomplices in the crime. They're depicted in this way like two columns, but also the way two angels are often depicted in a painting surrounding and protecting the image of Christ. The other thing about this piece is how modest it is. The smallness of this, the modesty of it, and the detail all have a relationship to this kind of religious iconography, not just the formal structure of the image. So with that, I would like to then uh, look at just maybe one image from this absolutely incredible book of hours from the Netherlands. So here we have this exquisite book of hours, uh, 15th century from the Netherlands. We don't know who created it, but this was a private object, and it was a private way of having a religious experience. They have a similar kind of, I guess, a feeling that some of Enzer's etchings have. If you experience looking at it, what happens is you do this thing where you look really close, and suddenly, it's just you and the object, you and the image. And the same thing happens, whether you're a religious person or not, when you're confronted by this book. You kind of, you go into it. You look very deep and you look at the detail. And even the image, which is surrounded by a border of, of decoration, is very, very small and looks very much like this structure. So here in this particular image, we have Christ and he's risen. And below we see these little heads coming up from the dead. So we have this resurrection. Um, on the sides, almost like two columns, like the scoundrels on the two columns on the two sides of this etching from Enzer, um, we have these angels blowing the trumpets. I'm actually not a, a Catholic or a Christian, but I understand the story because of the religious iconography that's being used and being employed. You know who the characters are. You don't need someone to translate it for you. It is only this kind of structure that allows you to understand this narrative that has repeated itself for thousands of years now. That structure is what is used in all of Enzer's pieces. So this kind of detail, this kind of intimacy, um, and these kinds of images, I think, is, is important to kind of look at again in order to understand uh, what Enzer was looking at um, in his very Catholic world that he lived in, uh, but also what he was thinking about in art history and in his own paintings. So in my work, I also look at religion, because I think that's, or uh, Western religion, especially Christianity, uh, as a way to, to look at these structures, to look at form, um, but also a way to better understand the moment. So it is interesting that we, you know, look at this artist from the 19th century to understand uh, what is happening in the 21st century. Um, but that 19th century artist was looking at work uh, long before his time as well in order to understand his moment. So we do keep repeating ourselves and, um, and we learn that and understand that through looking at artwork.